TrumanLakeFishingIntel.com presents your latest Truman Lake Fishing Intel Expert Roundtable. TrumanLakeFishingIntel.com is your premier resource for up-to-date expert fishing reports and videos to help you find the fish faster and become a better Truman angler. Multi-species coverage includes crappie, catfish, bass, hybrids, and more. View this month's full episode roundtable exclusively at TrumanLakeFishingIntel.com. This month's roundtable is brought to you by Anglers Port Marine. Whether you're a first-time boat owner or a seasoned professional, Anglers Port Marine has an option for you. Conveniently located between Clinton and Warsaw on 7 Highway, stop on in to view top industry boat brands including Phoenix, Low, and Camus Boats. With their award-winning sales and service, Anglers Port Marine has you covered. Call 660-438-4600 or learn more at anglersportmarine.com. Just another nightly rental. Owned by David and Gina Townsend, this lake area property located at 32640 Highway 43 in Warsaw is perfect for your next lake getaway. Sleeping up to 8, this home is located conveniently within a short drive to boat ramps on both Truman and Lake of the Ozarks. Weekly discounted rates are available and a welcome meal is provided if booked more than one night. Call now to book your stay, 660-287-7615. Total Auto Repair, your go-to vehicle repair service in Clinton, Missouri. Located right across from City Hall, Total Auto Repair features a combined 62 years of auto repair experience. Master technicians for Ford, Chevy, and Toyota, and they have all ASC master certifications. Specialties include brakes, suspension, HVAC, electrical, drivetrain, and drivability. And a special discount is available for Truman Lake Fishing Intel members when you show them your premium account at the counter. Call 660-383-1136 to schedule your top-of-the-line vehicle service today. And now, let's start the show. Boys and girls, we are back again for another edition of the Truman Lake Fishing Intel Expert Roundtable. It is early February. We are a few days before a big event, the Truman Lake Fishing Expo. Coming up on Friday and Saturday, that's the 9th and 10th I believe just here in a few days we are running our $25 off special like we do every year there so if you are a current member or a member that a free member um, come get $25 off it's a great savings um, so come on down there's gonna be several thousand people that go through this show and there's gonna be some great seminars uh, David Ryan is giving a seminar on his jerk baits and just fishing jerk baits in general on Truman and beyond. And Jim Kuda, who's another one of our contributors, is a hybrid guide, hybrid mania guide service, is also going to be giving a seminar as well, discussing uh, how to go find these hybrids and, and get them in the boat. So that's been something that's become really, really popular here these last couple of years, and there's a lot of people doing it, and there is some tips and tricks to stay on those schools without spooking them. So. Be sure to check those out. There's gonna be several other seminars as well. Tons of great vendors. Gonna be a really, really fun, nice event. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to tonight and sitting down and talking with these guys because we've got some unreal knowledge sitting here at the table. Of course, on my far right, the bass fishing extraordinaire, Darren Langford. Oh, man. <laughs> and the guy that maybe beats up Darren quite a bit. And then the bass fishing. <laughs> Special guest, super excited, Daryl Reach, uh, who is uh, fishing partners with John Bennett. These guys have been mainstays on Truman Lake for quite a few years, won a ton of events. In fact, I've looked up some of the stuff. I've lost count. I know you guys have won quite a bit. Um, and what's really cool about Daryl and what we're going to get into, not only has he been uh, really good at bass fishing throughout the whole entire lake, uh, but he has been here and fished Truman Lake since before it was even Truman Lake. So he got to see the tributary arms, and then when it was flooded, um, he's fished it ever since. And he helped move Osage Bluff Marina, which was originally up in the Osceola area. He helped move that. They floated it down for several days to where it is now. Um, if I remember, it was a several-day process. Three days. Three days. So we're going to get into those details you got to stick around and watch because uh, that's going to be a really fascinating story. And, of course, last but not least, 
the crappie king of Truman Lake, Richard <laughs> Bowling of Richard Bowling Guide Service. So really looking forward to the conversation tonight. Uh, I want to say thank you to some of our sponsors that help make the website possible, make these dinners possible. Angler's Port Marine uh, is a big premier sponsor of ours. Camus, Phoenix, Low Boat Lines. Get on down there. They've got a, a lot full of boats right now to choose from. And of course, if they don't have what you're looking for, you can go sit right down with them. They can custom order it for you and get it on in. We are just a short time away from the springtime when everyone's going to be getting out after it. So now's a good time to get in there and get your boat ordered because the crappie spawn is right around the corner. Everyone's going to be, what are we, when are we going to see the first question of when the crappie spawn? Uh, is it going to be uh, what, early like early March, early mid-March when people are like, is it on yet? Uh, Mid-March. Mid-March. Mm -hmm. They're going to be asking, we'll see. We'll see when we start seeing those first questions come in on when the spawn. Is it happening? Um, so, but with that, let's kind of review some of the latest uh, lake conditions um, and some of the fishing conditions, then we're really going to dive in with Daryl and Darren over here. So, so Richard, you have been out, you've been driving around for the last 10 days, waiting for that ice to get off. What's the latest on what you're seeing in that front? Uh, the ice is out, you know, from the lower lake to the upper end, the ice is gone. Spent many a days on the lower end, which... You know, I'm not going to hide it. I hate it. <laughs> you know, catching a fish 30, 35 foot deep, I hate it. Yeah. It's, it's not fun to me. It's uh, when you're live scoping with a group of people or one person at a time in general, what I do, uh, it's hard to have them put it in the face of yeah. one crappie at 30 foot deep. So ice has gone in the upper end. Now that I'm catching them, one, I caught a lot of fish today, one this deep underwater, one foot or mm -hmm. six inches underwater. Yeah. So... Love it. Ice is gone. Fishing is great. Yeah. Well, and the one thing I'll add, because you were on the Grand Arm today, yes. um, and I was over on the Osage. We took off out of Berry Bend, and there was actually, it was a little bit more than skim ice. Um, it was about a half inch. Now, it wasn't all the way across. It was spots. Um, I did shoot some drone footage of it, so, um, but it was for sure, and there was a few spots that we hit that my buddy was like, ooh, the old, the old sea arc, uh, I guess I could take it, and it did. But um, we ran up and around, and, and there was a fair amount right as you get out from the boat ramp and around the bend, and then it kind of dissipated after that. So um, the lake is up, though, a uh, foot and a half at least. Yeah, I, I checked that, I think, yesterday. Um, so the lake's up. Uh, the water has, was definitely getting muddier over in the Osage. Is it getting any dirtier over in the Grand with incoming water? It's very dingy, yes. Okay. Yep. But fish pull, as you always say. Oh, they eat, yes. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the general lake conditions. Lower end, you were down there a few days ago, weren't you? What was it? I know it's probably changed by now, but it was still fairly clean back then. Oh, very clean. Yeah. 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 Too clean. That's the reason I'm fishers today. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed this in the Grand Arm uh, here in the last couple of days, uh, up around Barry Bend, there's definitely quite a bit of debris that was coming down. Now, nothing big, no big trees or anything, just a bunch of just little clots of yeah. I've debris. been at Osceola and just driving across 13 yeah. Bridge, the Osage River is running pretty hard. Yeah. And there's a lot of floating smaller debris coming yeah. down, and it's dirty. Yeah. So they, yep. somewhere there had to have been a big rain or melt off or yep. something but there's quite a bit of current coming down the osage yep and we we noticed that water getting dirtier over there on the osage today as well so um so let's rewind real quick before we get into what you've been doing on the grand i want you to kind of talk a little bit i know you don't like it but for people that are going to focus on the lower end because it's it's fairly similar pretty much not just this time of year, but you're fishing deeper in general down there yes. throughout the summertime and the fall. Um, what if folks are putting in at Shawnee Bend, if they're putting in a Windsor Crossing and going down, um, what what do they need to be looking for? What are the, is it all everywhere you went was 30 plus feet deep that you were fishing in? It was for me. Okay. But, you know, it's core uh, brush piles. It's uh, uh, bluff ends, you know, it's got a lot of water on it. It's got a few treetops on it. All, every one of them fish were, you know, 25 feet was the, the shallowest I caught a fish in about two weeks down there. So anywhere I ran to, it was a, it was a brush pile. It, it was a channel edge that had a big drop off and as relating to that, and they were still down 25 to 35 feet. Um, just 
you know, covered in water. And what I was doing then is two jigs. You know, I put an eighth ounce on it and a sixteenth on top. And you know, you got to feather it down and finally get it to the school. And then it schools the fish down there. It's not one fish that you're mm. fishing for. And I don't like that either. I don't like to be at the mercy of the fish. I like to see what I'm going to catch. Right. Um, so when you're dropping in on these schools, it's not. 10 fish, it's not 100 fish, it'll be 500 mm -hmm. fish. So you might drop in on top and be some good ones on top and, and you'll watch through the center of the pack will come through and that's the ones that's gonna eat and you catch what bites and you can't single out a fish. So schools and numbers of fish down there is unreal and I don't like it. Were they, so were they biting really good though or were they, so for example, today the fish were a little bit finicky. I mean, we got them to eat when the sun when the sun came up real good. They ate better. Um, but down the lower end, leading up to the last few days, uh, were they eating really good, or were you having to dead stick it quite a bit down there? Uh, what I'd have to do down there is get it get their attention, and then just kind of as slow as you could really. I mean, okay. painstakingly slow. Yeah, I had to I had to put all my poles that I usually use in the upper grand away. Uh -huh. Get poles has got line on it to get down to them. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. I don't like that. You know, and, and, you know, there's 500 fish in that school and maybe 10 fish out of that mm -hmm. school you can make bite. Maybe yeah. I can make a few more bite, but I do it every day. But when you're trying to get your client to, you know, to twitch it, whatever they need, <clears throat> um, it's a little different when they're, they're that deep. So to say that that bite, to me, was not a good bite. Yeah. You know, I've seen times that you could pitch with my 3.6 that I could pitch on and catch every single fish out of that school, want to bite. Right now, down there, no. Will not do it. So, but it sounds like you really weren't working your way into many pockets or creeks very far back. Down uh, there, you couldn't. Because when yeah. I was down there, the main lake was the only thing uh, open. Yeah. Everything else was iced over. I like to got into a... There's some pockets down there that they'll get into, mm -hmm. but uh, you couldn't get in there because of the ice. You weren't going to take the the pretty Phoenix boat. Uh, no, to break I, some ice. No, it's it's, <laughs> it's a wrap now, so I wouldn't have any wrap left. Yeah, yeah. Well, so very interesting way. And, and as far as the brush piles go, I know there's a bazillion of them, but. Um, if you're just going to go look around and side scan, that's one way to find them. Uh, one of the other ways is you get on the MDC website, Google search MDC brush piles. Yeah. and They're they everywhere. Actually, yeah, they have a file. In fact, if you get their, I uh, forget the name of the app. Uh, I think it's the Mo Fishing app. Uh, they have the brush piles marked on there as well. So you can get them there. You can get the file. I think it's a file that you can actually download to your graph. If I remember correctly, yep. or you can buy a chip that's yep. already got a minute. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and what you saw was basically any MDC brush pile. Every much single had brush fish. pile that had thirty foot of water on it had fish in it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's a lot to choose from, from Shawnee Bend up the first few miles of the Osage, up to Long Shoal, up to Truman Little, State Park. Little Tebow. Little Tebow is absolutely loaded with fish. Yeah. I sat there one day, and I did. I, my trip did not come, so I just went out by myself. And I think I made 16 casts, and I caught my 15 keeper fish. Wow. And, uh, and so, complete opposite now that you've been in the Grand the last few days. Um, shallow fish. I will say, so you and I were talking the other day about a lot of roaming fish. There was a ton of roaming fish There's today a lot of roaming uh, fish. over in the Osage. Yeah. Lots of roaming fish. There was fish on the trees as well. Uh, the trees that did have them, it really seemed like it was those trees that had three or four or five or six that kind of came together at the bottom and then yeah. forked up. Yeah, dumps that holds a little heat. Yep. Is what I think. Yep. And those were fairly loaded up today in, in a, one of the pockets that we checked. Um, but as far as the grand goes, it's completely opposite. You're fishing, what, 10 to 12 feet of water, and the fish are down anywhere from a foot to six feet. Is that what you were I'm saying? I'm fishing six foot of water out to about 12 foot. Okay. Fish will be six inches under the surface to five feet. Yeah. Yeah, and you just you've been putting in a buck saw. You've been going up. You've hit quite a few spots between there all the way up above Otter. And has the bite been pretty good? Has it been finicky? What is just kind of the overall quality of the bite and the quality of the fish? The fish is great. I mean, good fish. Th I threw back uh, yesterday. Threw back some really nice fish. Today we they're just good eaters. Mm -hmm. um, the quality is good. The, the bite is what I call good. Okay. You know, when you're picking on one fish and you can make your bite, you know, 
three out of four times, that's a pretty good bite. Yeah. Uh, catch them on a jig, catch them on a minnow. I've been taking minnows a lot. Just When you're on a trip, you want everybody to try to catch every fish they drop on, so a minnow's hard to beat. Mm -hmm. And caught never, you know, in the last five days, and I, and it, it, true, I told my guys, I said, uh, I think five or six days ago, whatever the first ice out was, and I was up there, I said, boys, we, the very first big fish we catch, I'm kissing it right on the lips. <laughs> so I, I was teaching them how to live scope, so I caught two just, you know, just little 10 inch fish, threw them back. Then I caught one about 13, and I picked that sucker up, and I kissed it right on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a good bite, it really is. They're, there's fish sitting everywhere. You know, some of these creeks, the fish are at the very back, as far back as you can go. And I'm not going to mention the creeks, but there's other creeks that they should be in the back. They're not back there. Mm. I went to a major creek yesterday, went all the way back, went around the corner. That's a good hint. And nothing. It was not there. And I had to work my way out. I got about halfway out, and then I started seeing a lot of fish, and that's where I was at today. So um, every creek's a little different. A lot of creeks have got fish in the very, very back, six foot of water. Go back to six foot of water, spin around, and work your way out. And... Uh, the first day that I got ice out where I kissed that fish at, it was on a, the bluff comes around and it's on the main lake and then it flattens out to a big main lake flat. And that's where I can go there tomorrow. And I promise you in two hours, me and my buddies tomorrow that I got, mm. Scott Wareham, we can be done. Yeah. It's a main lake flat and there are thick. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you something just to clarify on a creek. When you say a creek doesn't have any fish in it, uh, or they're not back there like they should be, I mean... It's Truman Lake. We've got a bazillion fish. There's there's fish, but wh like, what's your definition of not having? Is it you only see one every ten trees? Is it like what is what if people go in and they're looking at their screen and they're only seeing a certain amount of fish? Is it okay leave or is it oh this is what I'm looking for? Like what's the number of fish you're looking for on the screen? Well, this creek I was idling in and I side skinning, you know, shooting the trees and looking down mm -hmm. and from bait. And there's a bunch of bait from in 12 and 13 foot of water. I got back to that shallow water. Further back I got, there's no bait and I wouldn't see much on the side skin. Yeah. Said that it can't be right. There's got to be fish here. Right. So I got on the flats and looking around and, you know, I went by 10 or 12 trees and I didn't see a fish. If I don't see a fish, if you're in a creek that's got a number of fish you're going to see a fish on every single stump you're looking at mm -hmm. right now or you're going to see them in between the stumps sitting you know with their backs almost out mm -hmm. so i like to see a fish on every tree or two i don't want to see a lot of fish per tree i want to see one or two i'm not fishing for a group of fish i want to see one good fish another big fish another big fish just keep moving you know yeah keep me busy yeah well and that brings me so i want to ask you guys the same question i mean we're coming up Springtime's right around the corner. The bass are going to be moving up. They're going to be getting in these creeks. For folks that don't know the lake like you guys, they're coming down. They're just trying to break down the lake, and they pick out a few creeks they want to try. When you go into that creek, when are you making the decision? Are you fishing it all the way? Say it's a creek you've never fished. You're just seeing if they're back there. Are you fishing all the way to the back and out? Uh, if you don't get a bite at a certain point in time, are you gone? Like... Walk me through the decision-making process of how much time you're spending in that creek before you decide they ain't in here. Well, a little bit different than crappie. Bass are really time-oriented, sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might... I, I won a tournament one year, caught 21 pounds. We fished the creek four times. Mm. We just could see shad. We knew there had to be fish there. And then all of a sudden... At 10 o'clock, we made the same pass and caught 21 pounds in about 20 minutes. Mm. I mean, that's how bass fishing is. A lot of times, always start at the bluff end. That's just the rule of thumb. Start at the bluff end, and then you just work your way back. And, you know, if you don't catch nothing there, you can go to the next one, but don't be afraid to come back. There's, yeah. there's kind of like Richard said, most of the creeks got fish in them. Yeah. It's just, you know, you just it's a timing thing. Yeah. So, but yeah, if I, if I catch them and then just really key on when you catch them or where at you catch mm -hmm. them, you know, if you catch them at the bluff end, the steep part of the bluff end, then that's what you key on yep. in the other creeks. You know, you just you start eliminating as you go, but if, otherwise, you know. Say you get on them right away on the bluff end, are you even going to make your way back? anymore or i might just, fish it i might fish one or yeah. two but if you'll know as soon as you start quick catching them yeah yeah 
Now, are you guys talking this time of year specifically, or yeah, what you... coming into the springtime, into the the spawn um, between now and into April, May. Yeah, because I, you know, me personally, like this time of year and for the next, you know, month until the water really starts to warm for the bass. Yeah. I, I myself really not even going to focus on the creek a whole lot. Right. I'm going to be more main lake mm -hmm. stuff for you know now and for the next month yeah uh, i'm not saying you can't you know obviously if the, you know just always depends on the water you yeah. know temp and and same thing with exactly what he said and it was early spring and john and i fished a tournament and i'd fished a creek the day before and they bit pretty good mm -hmm. well john and i go there the next day and we made a complete pass in this creek and caught one fish mm. and thought you know what's going on they're like they were here yesterday they still got to be here they right. didn't swim you know half a mile away <clears throat> we turned around and started fishing back out and it was like fishing in a barrel <laughs> it's something yeah. you know something with bass they do that just yeah. like you're talking about yeah. it, it the time of day and that the sun had gotten to a certain height the you know i don't know maybe warmed a water a degree or two by mm -hmm. the time we turned back around and we I think we caught two limits on the way out. Yeah, wow. After having fished it and caught one. Mm -hmm. It was like something we'd never seen. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you learn that lesson that a lot of times you think there's no fish and they're really there. It just takes one little thing to yep. change it. Yeah. Um, that In a BFL, I, I took third. Well, actually, it wasn't a BFL. It was that Bassmasters Pro-Am thing. I, I remember fishing in a little bitty pocket. It was a bluff in pocket. It, it come off the main lake of the bluff and then just kind of tapered down this little bitty pocket. And I fished it in, didn't get a bite, and backed back out. I backed out. It was small enough I couldn't turn the boat around. Backed out and caught 20 pounds. And just like five flips. And I had fished it, my partner fished it, and then my partner fished it, then I fished it because I was backing out. Yeah. And I caught him on the fourth time. But all we could tell, we stopped and said, what just happened? And this, a little tick of wind start blowing and that was all it took Bam. Mm. so you just there's fishing a lot of them but that's when i say key on bluff ends i mean you can key on main lake bluff ends or or in the creek bluff ends but just wherever you're fishing make sure you key on start yeah. at bluff ends that's and, the best place to start this time of year uh truman's obviously not known to be like this unbelievable wintertime fishery in december january february but we've had some 60 degree days here so for the guys that maybe do want to go out and try for it, what would you guys recommend people I, be doing? I gotta tell you, I'm not a cold weather fisherman. I yeah. don't enjoy it that much. Yeah. But I've got a lot of buddies who absolutely swear that there truly is some fantastic <clears throat> stick bait fishing that goes on Truman mm -hmm. in late and early, or you know, late winter to early spring, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That, I mean, they just, they are kind of fanatical about it and it drives them nuts that there's yep. never any tournaments. Almost, we never really see a tournament until April no. for the most part, right? Right. Every now and then you might see one at the end of yeah. March. Well, the biggest stringers last year weighed in was the only tournament we had in March. And it was an mm. average Joe's. And there was two stringers over 20 pounds weighed in that day. Wow. And that was a, almost, there was only, what, one more stringer the whole year weighed in 20 yeah. pounds? Yeah, I don't remember much. Yeah. I don't think so. I think you're right on that. There, yeah, there there's many 20 a pound bunch work. of the guys we fish with that you know I'm friends with that just they it drives them crazy that 30 they don't have any March. Yeah. I mean my my key is 38 degrees to 40. I mean when it hits that mark you can catch them mm -hmm. on a stick bait. I mean really good. You just you have to figure out the cadence. Mm -hmm. That's the whole deal on a stick bait. I mean how long they want it to set. Sometimes they want it to set for 10 seconds, sometimes just five seconds, sometimes a long twitch, a little slow twitch. Yeah. Once you figure that part out, then it's yeah. all downhill from there. Right. David Ryan has talked about how he, it's, he, well, he's just an aggressive fisherman. Yeah, he, fishes he fishes fast. fast. Um, what's your guys' perspective? Uh, <clears throat> To me, it's, it, it is hard for me personally to have the patience to sit there and wait and count to five or ten. Um, well, I can tell you this. When I was growing up, and it was common, and you know, I don't think it's as common now, but when I was a kid, people used to tell you, you'd throw it out there, you'd twitch it, and then you could light a cigarette and smoke it. <laughs> yep, I've heard Remember that story? Yep, yep. You'd light a cigarette and smoke it and let it sit there, you know? And yep. All I can tell you about that is watch a lot of the national 
it's evolved a little bit. Uh, of the big of yeah. the big trails where they're fishing these jerk baits, and just watch how they fish it. Yeah. The vast majority of time, when there's a decent bite, there's not a lot of long pause. Yeah. It, it's a you know twitch twitch, let it set twitch twitch you watch them do it and yeah, i'm not saying it's always that way it's but. more that i won a tournament in march last year mm -hmm. i had a 20 21 pound stringer yeah. and it was more not letting it pause so long as it was the cadence it's you know you you kind of and if you look around you can see shad mm -hmm. dying if you see a shad dying just watch him for a second and see how he does it does he flutter quite a bit before he stops or yeah. does he just I saw some yeah, several this morning cheap. coming up to the surface and trying to fight their way back down. Yep, and that's when a stick bait's on. <coughs> I mean, on like donkey. Uh, have you been? Did you see many dying shad at all in the grand? Yeah, no. Do you see some on the lower end? Did you win I did the lower end. Yeah, on the yeah. lower end. Oh, that. And uh, so I saw 30, uh, 35 and a half degrees today on the water temp. Do you remember what you saw? Thirty nine. You saw thirty nine today. Yeah, no, no ice though. So that's getting to be well. That's in that dirty, dirty, dirty water. Yeah, but yeah. The, the difference between clear and dirty water. Yeah, probably you know, the clear. Degrees, you know, yeah. the, the dirty water. You know, it takes longer to warm up, but it don't lose that at night. Mm -hmm. So it, what what it's gaining, it's kind of keeping at night. Mm -hmm. Or like the dam. I think Cody Manhattan today said he's fighting a little bit of ice. You had ice over there. Yeah. I bet you that water is a little cleaner than where I was. Mm -hmm. Where I'm at, it's pretty dirty, so it's holding that heat. So it, it don't get as cold at night. I mean, it gets cold at night, but the water temperature don't drop as much as it does in that clear water. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm maintaining it to where you're going to warm up faster tomorrow, but you're going to cool down more. Yeah. I'm going to maybe gain a degree for the night. So, yeah. You know, it's, hmm. uh, it was 39 when I quit. Well, it was probably 40 when I quit today. Yeah. Wow. So let me ask you this then, Daryl. When are you starting to get pretty excited to get out there? I know you just talked about how wintertime isn't necessarily your favorite you know, it, again, April is really when I start getting excited about yeah. fishing. And uh, to me, for the kind of fishing we like to do, kind of shallow water power fishing, is once it hits 50. Yeah. That's when I that's when I get excited about it because yeah. you can start fishing a slow roll on a spinner bait mm -hmm. and flipping a jig around. And uh, but you know we're a long ways from yeah. that uh, time of year. Yeah. And. One thing I'll comment on too is something to always think about when you guys are talking water temp and there's a one degree difference from what you saw and yep. what you saw. I'm almost 60 years old. I've never pulled up to a boat once in my life and had the same water temperature. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah. There, there's, I mean, they really vary. So. And you're just talking about just the, the transducers. The being transducer, different. Yeah. yeah. So you know. You, you may have had a one degree of difference. You may have had more than that. Yeah. Uh, but I it's, it's funny when you think about... Well, I, you can change that with just raising your trolling motor. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it, yep. Also, there's another one. It depends on how deep yeah, each one yeah. of you had your... That's right. Your, you know, wherever your tip gauge is, if it's on your trolling motor, if it's on the back of the boat. But in all my life, I've never once pulled up to somebody and we's like, oh, yeah, we both got, you know, 42 degrees exactly. No. Yeah. I, I got 42. What do you got? Uh, 45. <laughs> so it's just funny how... With today's technology, I don't think I still don't think we get all that great, yeah. you know, an accurate temp. But you know, I get the difference between the different types of right. water. It's going to be a different uh, temperature. But I've always just chuckled with that. Like Bennett and I always talk because you know it's like I'll tell him like what water temperature I found. He's like, well, mine was you know much warmer, and I'm like, well. Then we get our boats together, and there's like that four degree difference, and uh -huh. in the and what I'm showing to what he is, it's like they're just they're always so different. It's funny, yeah, you know, almost. Um, I want to dive deeper into the bass fishing and get into kind of the history of it on Truman real quick. Before we do that, though, uh, I want to do a recap quickly on catfish and what you've been hearing on the catfish. Because I know you haven't been going out for them, but you talk to folks, you know what's going on. Yeah, it's um, just Wendy Banks, you know, on the Grand, Upper Grand. Wendy Banks, where they're blowing in weak shad out, is mm -hmm. what they're eating. And now uh, just anchor fishing and uh, fan casting poles and bites good. It's yeah, really good. Sh the shallow stuff, of course, up in the Grand. Anchor uh, them out four foot, fan cast the poles two foot to eight foot of water and hold on. Because from what it sounded like, it was kind of tough there on the lower end, right as the ice was coming out, because the fish were just gorging. There's a lot of, lot of. I seen a lot of dead shad down there. I did, and I seen eagles on the ice trying to pick the shad. 
I didn't see as many dead shad in the upper grand mm -hmm. as down there. So that's, you know, maybe it helps, maybe it don't. But yeah. um, they're feeding up right now. I know you guys are catching a lot, a lot of blue cat, and I'll be out Thursday catch them, and it oh. should be pretty easy. Okay. And I know that just like putting in a buck saw, just idling out, the whole flat inside a buck saw is full of shad. Mm. Eight foot of water, they're everywhere. Good shad. Is there a bunch of catfish with them? I didn't look, guys, in a hurry. <laughs> catch crap. I'm looking at the shad thinking tomorrow when I get that, I was going to take my net with me in the morning, yeah. catch my crappie, and then uh, clean them, and then on the way out, catch my shad. You're going to take your day. net with you and go catch your crappie with the net? Well, I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm school 500 or 10. Um, oh, one other, just, I want to get your guys' thoughts, because you just reminded me, just kind of just doing things not by the book. There's a little bit of a controversy right now, and we don't have to mention names in the crappie masters, but there's the there's a rule that is in question that there may have been some discussing via phone uh, text message, I believe, from a guy that has won a lot of the tournaments, and some people, if you get online on the crappie masters, there's a bunch of people that are like, in that dude's camp saying this is a bad precedent to ask for his phone records to be a member of Crappie Masters. Uh, but on the same token, it's clearly stated rule. And so you guys have all been bass fishing tournament guys. You've been crappie fishing tournament guys. What's your perspective on this kind of stuff? I know you've seen stuff throughout the years. I mean, to me, it's pretty cut and dry. You know, you just follow the rules. But... Pretty cut and dry. Yeah. It, it, well, it is for most of us, but it's funny because he and I met earlier before coming here, and we were talking about that in bass fishing. Mm -hmm. And even on our just local level of fishing,